Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the UMBC Coaches Corner. I'm joined by co-head women's lacrosse coaches, Coach Jody Gyro, Coach Amy Eckel. Coach, pretty up and down week last week. Two wins and a loss. Overall, what do you think of your, your team's plan? What do you take from it? Um, I think the good news is that we're playing more consistent lacrosse. Um, so every game we're building on the game prior. Um, and for us, that's, that's huge. Um, so we're getting a more consistent game. It's not PC and up and down. But, um, you know, we faced a very good tackle team. Um, and we faced an excellent Colgate team this weekend. And the girls really did excellent pulling out that win. I'm going to give them to face an excellent Maryland team coming up tomorrow. Now looking back on that Colgate game, down at half, 6-4, come out you know, in a 9-1 run in the second half. What adjustments are made, or what what happens in that second half to just change things around dramatically? Uh, well, I think first and foremost we started with some draws. Uh, we, we dominated the, the clock possession time in the second half, and the biggest thing that we've really been struggling with, uh, we we started shooting better. We, we shot the ball better, so we came off a couple games where we shot sub twenty five percent. You know, we outshot Towson, we thirty two shots in the cage and scored eight times. And you're not going to beat good teams when you do that. And Colgate's a, a good team. And, uh, and I think that was the biggest difference for us. Uh, eight meters, we finally did a couple of those in the second half. Um, but possession is always the key with us. And, and then I think the girls started digging in defensively the way we needed to dig in because they have some serious threats. Now, talking earlier today, you said Lindsey Fox couldn't go for the Colgate game, so you're trying to have to find some other options. Looks like you've been able to do that. Abby Wilson, six goals, six assists. Kristen Bilney, nine goals, two assists. Lissa Simone's eight goals, two assists. And Chad Harvey, seven goals. So and he had four. <laughs> we got our number. They might issue that. So uh, <laughs> not, it's not just Lindsey Cox, Lindsey Cox, Lindsey Cox. You're finding a little bit of a well rounded balance there. Yeah, I mean, we want an attack that's that dynamic. We want an attack where everyone's a threat. Um, those are hard teams to guard. Um, you know, for example, Maryland, they have everyone on that team's a threat. That's kind of what we are looking to do with our attack. Um, you know, our middies in the transition have to be a threat, and our attackers, when the ball's in their stick, they've got to be able to drive and create. So um, we're really pleased with how that has um, rounded out our attackers and our middies. Now, yeah, Lindsay's not available for Tuesday either, so. Yeah. Yeah. That was scary. That was scary. We had to take her to the hospital on Friday night when we got to Hamilton. Um, not exactly a metropolis <laughs> of the <laughs> world of best health care. But, um, but she's doing better. Hopefully she'll be back in practice this week at some point. And, uh, but yeah, like Amy said, that was our goal coming in this year. We knew that the teams were going to just double and get after Lindsay at all times. And so we had to kind of diversify the offense and the attack. And, and to, to the girls' credit, to Amy's credit, they've done an amazing job of sharing the ball. So. Now you've hinted at a team that you're trying to replicate a little bit. You face them tomorrow night at the number one ranked Maryland Terrace mm -hmm. down in College Park. Obviously, that's a challenge trying to stop all the attackers, but how, how can you do it? How can you get down, get down there and play UMDC lacrosse and come out with a result? We're going to hold the ball for 59 minutes and 56 <laughs> seconds, and then we're going. <laughs> no, I, with Maryland, it's always possession. I mean, you, and even when you win it, they're so aggressive and so good and so well coached that they're not going to let you just throw the ball. So our girls got to make plays. I mean, we obviously prepare for Maryland like we would anybody else. And, uh, you can't say enough great things about it. you look up and down the roster and you're like, oh my God, when does this stop, you know? So you can't prepare for everybody on the roster. We, we hopefully we prepare well today for what they do. Um, one day to prepare for Maryland is not, not ideal, but we'll, we're going to go down there and I guarantee we'll compete. We will compete. Whatever happens into the game is going to happen. But, um, you know, that's what Amy and Alex and I really love about this team. Like, they could have rolled over at halftime in Colgate. You know, your best player's not there, or she's there, she's not playing. You know, we have other, two other starters not in the lineup. It's easy to say, oh, this is just not our day, and just pack it up. But that is never going to happen with this team, and that's what we love about them. Like, they just get after you, you know. And so we'll see what happens. It's a, it's really awesome to play Maryland. Like, we haven't had them on the schedule in a long time, um, and we respect everybody now there so much. Like, we're longtime friends. Amy's played with tennis uh, at UVA, and, uh, and we respect the hell out of what they do. So. It'll be a good experience for the girls to realize, like, this is what it takes, you know, this is what it looks like. And not to look too far ahead, but then you do get to come home next Saturday, track some comes here to the stadium. Yeah. What are you expecting out of that, getting back home, hopefully building on stuff? I mean, Drexel's a very well-coached, well-prepared team. Um, you know, 
last year we um, lost on the road by one. Um, but you know, this year we're we're ready to take the nine home, and I think you know, we've had a lot more time to prepare for them. We'll have four or five days get to watch some films, um, and you know, I think that we're playing better across this year than we did last year at this time. So um, I think I have a lot of confidence in that we have, like you said, all those scoring threats. Now we're the team, you know, that other teams are going to have to prepare for having scoring threats on you know all ends of the ball. So. I'm excited to play a very good, very competitive team um, here home on a Saturday, you know, come out with a win, so. And we had like 450 kids coming out from the Catonsville Sports Youth Organization, so that's fun too, so. Lots yeah. of support. Maybe we'll get some of them out on the field, we'll play them like 450 to 12. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck this week, we'll talk to you in the near right. future. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate Thanks, Dan. it. Once again, the Retrievers take on the number one ranked Maryland Terrapins tomorrow night. Down in College Park, 5 o'clock, first draw. And then come home to take on the Drexel Dragons here at the UMBC Stadium on Saturday. For the Coach's Corner, I'm Dan LaHatt.